Hey everybody. Today we're getting started on hypothesis testing, also known as significance testing. I think the best way to understand hypothesis testing is just by working through an example. So that's what we're going to do in this vid. Suppose that the manufacturer of a certain brand of chocolate claims that on average, their chocolate bars weigh 350 grams. I suspect that they're overestimating this number and that in fact the mean weight of their chocolate bars is less than 350 grams. So I do the obvious thing. I go out and I get a sample and I weigh them and I look at the sample mean. Let's say I get a sample of size 10. If I get a sample mean under 350 grams, I'm going to consider it to be evidence against the company's claim. And if I get a sample mean of 350 grams or more, it, uh, it will not be evidence against their claim. Um, so let's suppose that I get a sample mean of 347 grams. So obviously less than 350. This is, as I said a moment ago, evidence against the company's claim. But if I accuse them of lying about that population mean of 350 grams, they have a simple defense ready to go. Maybe my random sample of 10 chocolate bars just happened to be light because of random chance. And if I were to go out and get another sample mean, um, it might be 350 grams exactly, or it might even be a little bit more. Again, just due to random chance. I need to find some way of deciding between these two possibilities. The company is lying, or the company is telling the truth, and I just got a result due to random chance. Um, the best we're going to be able to do in this situation is to make a probability statement about the company's claim. Something like, if the company is telling the truth, what's the probability that we would get a sample mean as low as the one we got just by random chance? A lower probability is going to, is going to constitute stronger evidence against the company's claim. In order to do this mathematically, we're going to start by assuming that the mean weight of all the chocolate bars is, is actually 350 grams. We're going to start by assuming that the company's claim is true. If you look at that statement I have in quotes in that top paragraph, you can see this assumption in words, if they're telling the truth. We're going to call this the null hypothesis and label it H0. In this case, the null hypothesis is that the population mean of all the chocolate bars is exactly 350 grams. Counterintuitively, the null hypothesis represents the thing that we're trying to get evidence against, that we'd like to disprove. But we start our process by assuming that it's true. Let's also give a name to the thing that we are trying to establish, the thing that we want evidence for. In this case, it's that the mean weight of all chocolate bars is actually less than 350 grams. We'll call this the alternative hypothesis and label it H sub A. In this case, H sub A is that mu is less than 350, that the mean weight of all the chocolate bars is less than 350 grams. Um, let's explicitly note that both H naught and H A refer to parameters. These are numbers describing population, not the sample. So far, we haven't even mentioned the sample mean x bar. And there's a good reason for that. We want to use the sample mean x bar to make a decision between h0 and ha. Mathematically, we want to find the probability that x bar is less than or equal to 347 just through random chance when h0 is true. In order to compute that probability, we need to think about the sampling distribution of x bar. So we're going to assume that the company's claim is true, and then imagine going out and getting one sample of size 10, and then another, and another, and another. What does the distribution of x bar look like? Um, sometimes x bar will be a little high, sometimes a little low, but on average, it'll be exactly the same as the population mean. We can say more using the central limit theorem, which says, let's just review this, that for large n, and usually 30 is more than enough, the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar is approximately normal with mean mu and standard deviation sigma over the square root of n, where mu and sigma are the mean and standard deviations of the population. Moreover, if the distribution of the population is normal, then the approximation in the central limit theorem is exact and the distribution of x bar is exactly normal. I think a picture helps when we're imagining the central limit theorem. So here the blue curve 
the wider bell curve is supposed to represent um, individual chocolate bars. There's an average weight of 350 grams under the null hypothesis, but um, sometimes the individual chocolate bars will be a little heavy or a little light. And occasionally, an individual chocolate bar will be very heavy or very light. The green curve, another normal curve, is representing the sampling distribution of the sample mean X bar. Now I'm imagining going out and getting a sample of size 10 and taking the sample mean, doing it again and again and again. On average, that sample mean will be 350 grams if the null hypothesis is true. And it could be a little high or a little low, but there's going to be less variability in X bar than in individual chocolate bars. Because on any given sample, some of the high chocolate bars will likely balance out some of the light ones. Okay, let's assume in this case that we know the standard deviation for the chocolate bars that the company is producing. Let's assume it's 4 grams. Now, ultimately, that may not be um, a number that we actually know. And so in future videos, we're going to have to figure out what to do when we don't know a population standard deviation. But that's a problem for another day. According to the null hypothesis, the mean weight is mu equals 350 grams, and according to the central limit theorem, the distribution of x bar is going to be normal. So we now know everything about the sampling distribution of x bar. It's going to be normal with mean 350 grams and standard deviation sigma over root n, 4 over root 10, or 1.26 about. So we want to compute the probability of randomly getting a sample mean x bar less than or equal to the one we got, 347, um, just due to random chance in a normal distribution with this mean and variance 1.26 squared. Okay, so um, I'm going to do this by computing a z-score. I'm going to say the probability that x bar is less than or equal to that value is the probability that z, by at just due to random chance, is less than or equal to the corresponding z-score. So 340 minus 350 over 1.26. We're looking for the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 2.37 in the standard normal distribution. In R, the command for that is p-norm of negative 2.37. Obviously, you can do that in a TI calculator or using a table if you have a very old school stats teacher. In this case, that probability is about 0 0.0089, so a pretty small value. Let's talk for a minute about what exactly this means. Um, this probability, which we'll call the p-value, is the probability of getting a sample mean um, of 347 grams or less if the null hypothesis is true. That is, if the mean weight of all the company's chocolate bars was actually 350 grams. It's a very small p-value, meaning that it's unlikely that we would get such a small sample mean if in fact that null hypothesis were true. So basically, there's two things that could have happened here. First of all, the company was right, and mu is 350 grams, in which case something rare has happened. And that's possible. Even very rare things do happen from time to time. In this case, it would be 0 0.0089 of the time. The other possibility is that that null hypothesis was actually false, um, as we had initially assumed, and in that case that the alternative hypothesis would be true. In this case, the p-value that we got, that probability that we calculated, of 0 0.0089 is so low that the um, first option does not seem plausible. And so we'll choose the second option. We reject the null hypothesis and support the alternative hypothesis, concluding that there is good evidence that the population mean weight of all, those, all the chocolate bars produced by this company is actually under 350 grams. Okay. This is the basic process when running a hypothesis test, but there are a lot of questions that we have not answered yet. So let's close this video by explicitly noting them, and we'll be answering all of these in future videos. We said that that p-value of 0 0.0089 was small, but how small really is small enough when you're deciding whether to reject the null hypothesis? Would 0 0.02 qualify? Would 0 0.20? Secondly, the alternative hypothesis mu less than 350 wasn't exactly complementary to the null hypothesis that mu is equal to 350. 
So why didn't we use an alternative hypothesis that mu was not 350? In other words, a complementary alternative hypothesis. And how would our calculation have changed if we had done that? Next, at the beginning of our process, we assumed that the population standard deviation was sigma equals 4 grams. As I mentioned earlier, often in practice, we don't have access to that kind of population information. So what do we do in that case? Again, in the next videos to come, we'll be looking at all of those questions.